This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service Nebula when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the video description. After about eight years of using primarily Adobe Premiere Pro as my video editor of choice and the rest of the Adobe suite for my other software needs and swearing I would never change that, that my workflow was too dependent on Adobe, over the past couple years I have completely switched over to using DaVinci Resolve as my main video editing program of choice and I've been trying to share that Resolve love with streamers and content creators as I think everyone can benefit from them, especially since it's free to start, although there are some limitations. Along the way, I've had to learn a lot of new stuff myself and consult people who know better than me. And one of those people I've encountered is Patrick Sterling, who is a goldmine of tips, tricks, techniques, and presets for DaVinci Resolve. And they all work with the free version, which is incredibly important for streamers. So in this video, I wanted to highlight five things that streamers need to know about DaVinci Resolve. But I'm gonna let the guy who has helped me learn DaVinci Resolve a little bit help you as well. Number four is autosave. It's super important and lots of people miss it. So I had to throw it out here right at the beginning because I know a whole lot of you are about to click off this video, but at least now you know that DaVinci Resolve does have autosave. But for everyone else, hi. Welcome to the Epos Vox channel. I am not your stream professor. My name is Patrick Sterling and I run a channel all about the free video editing software DaVinci Resolve. And Adam asked me to come on and talk to you all about DaVinci Resolve. And more specifically, five things that streamers need to know about DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. Number one, yes, it's really free. If you go to the main DaVinci Resolve page on the Blackmagic Design website, you will see four versions of Resolve. There's DaVinci Resolve 16, the DaVinci Resolve 17 Beta, and then DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 and the DaVinci Resolve Studio 17 Beta. Resolve 16 and 17 are free, no strings and surprisingly few restrictions. DaVinci Resolve Studio is the paid tier of Resolve. It's a one-time fee of $300 and unlocks features like exporting in resolutions above 4K, hardware encoding on Nvidia cards, and select pro-level effects and tools. I've been asked time and time again whether or not Resolve Studio is worth the $300 price tag. And here's the thing. The free version of Resolve is worth way more than $300. This is a giant conversation unto itself, but just the tools on the color page used to cost, no joke, hundreds of thousands of dollars. The studio version of Resolve is an amazing product, but you still have the excellent option of the free version of Resolve, which I would 100% recommend. Especially if you're just learning how to edit, there are almost zero reasons why you should jump right to the studio version. I made the choice to intentionally stick to the free version of Resolve for all the work on my own channel so that I can show how powerful it is and how serious Blackmagic is about accessibility. Now, when it comes to the beta, currently Resolve 17 is still in beta. And all you really need to know is that Resolve 16 is a current full release, but Resolve 17 is available and has some interesting features that you might want access to. Personally, I recommend it jumping right into the beta, but with the awareness that you might run into a few beta bugs that would require you to roll back to Resolve 16. Number two, codex stuff. Now, talking about codex can get really technical, really quick, and it's not super my field, but I do have some important info to pass along. Most important for streamers is MKV files. These are what you might get when you record from OBS. Now you won't be able to natively drag these into Resolve, but MKVs are largely just a container for the files inside of them. And built into OBS is the ability to remux these files or pretty much just recover them with a proper codec format. For more info on that, you should totally check out the Epos Vox TikTok channel. Adam has been putting tons of great information up there, including taking down some of the more prevalent streamer or OBS myths. Don't miss out, check it out. But he also has a great video about this very thing. So you can record your videos to an MKV file, which will help you in case OBS crashes or you have any other issues. And then you can go into OBS and remux those files to something you can drag right into Resolve. Some other codec stuff, AVI files will not work in Resolve. Although from what I've read, 
Those are pretty dated and you shouldn't be using them. But if you run into a situation where you have an AVI file you want to bring into Resolve, you'll have to convert it beforehand. And the last thing with codecs, one issue I've run into a handful of times has to do with downloading VOD files from Facebook Gaming. For whatever reason, DaVinci Resolve might not play too kindly with these files. I think it has something to do with dynamic frame rate. I'm not totally sure, but if you are a Facebook Gaming creator downloading your VODs to then edit into content, be aware it might be something you need to run into and you might need to convert those files as well. Of course, it would always be better to record locally. All this talk about the best way to grow on YouTube can be stressful. That's why I partnered with some of my creator friends to build our own platform where we don't have to worry about that stuff. My videos are higher quality there, ad free, and often get extended from the YouTube versions. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. It features YouTube's top education creators such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and Low Spec Gamer. CuriosityStream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to partner up. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, not only do you get access to CuriosityStream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to CuriosityStream. For a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual plan, making it less than $15 per year for both CS and Nebula. While you're there, check out the dark web fighting cybercrime to learn more about how smart tech can actually put you at risk and how to react to it. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and to get access to both sites for under $15 per year. That's just crazy. Just do it. Number three, what's up with all these pages? This is our category just for walking through how Resolve actually functions. Resolve is broken up into pages represented by these icons on the bottom of the screen. You have the media page, the cut page, the edit page, the fusion page, the color page, the fair light page, and the deliver page. Now, while all these can represent different parts of the video creation process, that doesn't mean that every video should always start with the media page and then progress one after the other through all the pages until you're ready to export. It's entirely possible your project won't use the fusion page at all. And while color and sound are important parts of video, especially when you're starting, you might need to only lightly dabble in these pages if you use them at all. Now what's really important to understand is the difference between the cut page and the edit page. I've seen some people suggest that in every project you should ingest your footage, bring it all onto the cut page to trim out the fat or cut your clips down and then go to the edit page for more organization. And for most people that would just needlessly complicate things. Here's how I see things and what I recommend. The edit page is your home base. It's really what you should focus on first understand the tools, and then you can begin to branch out. And if you branch out, you'll see that the cut page is a specialized tool. Really, it's meant for speed. If you get good at it, you can fly through simple edits, but it doesn't have the full functionality of the edit page. And especially if you're coming from another software, the edit page might be closer to your experience there, with maybe an exception if you're coming from Final Cut Pro because the magnetic timeline there sort of is similar to what's on the cut page. But even though I do recommend it sitting on the edit page and learning that first, it is important to know at a high level what all these pages do. I've seen some new editors get really confused because they finish an edit they want to export and they expect to go to file export in the drop down menu. But the only thing there is quick export, which won't give you nearly as many options. You need to go to the deliver page to get the most control over your export. And number four, autosave. Although really we're going to use this point to touch on a few important behind the scenes settings. But first, yes, DaVinci Resolve has autosave, and unfortunately, a lot of editors don't discover this until they've had their first crash and maybe lost hours of work. And to enable autosave, we're gonna go to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, switch this from System to User, go to Project, Save and Load, and under Save Settings, we are going to check Live Save. And this is the kind of autosave that Resolve has. Instead of kicking in at whatever interval, it just keeps a running tally of your keystrokes and what it does in your project, so that if Resolve crashes for any reason at any time, you'll never lose more than a few actions. But you'll notice that under Live Save, you have Project Backups, and these work a little differently. These work sort of like traditional autosave. What this is doing is every few minutes, it will actually generate a file, send it to the location you choose. And these are most important just for keeping track of your work at certain intervals. Or if you want to go back and see a previous version at your work from 
earlier in the job. Moving on to some other interesting settings. Here's a small one that might bug some users at first, but it's easy to address. You'll notice that whenever you make a new timeline, by default, your time code will start at one hour. Now this might be a little confusing, but this is because of Resolve's long history in the industry. From what I've read, this is a send up of the time when they actually recorded on traditional film and one reel of film would never go over an hour. So they used the hour block of the time code to mark sequential reels. I read that it makes sense why that affects these timelines. Not totally sure, but here's how to address it. We're gonna to go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences, make sure we're still on user and go down to editing. And the first thing you'll see is start time code. Then we can go into here, zero it out, click save. And if you have any timelines open, this won't change those. Although if you start a new timeline, you'll see that the starting time code is now zero. If you have an existing time code, you can right click on that, go to timelines, starting time code, and zero that out as well. Next, we're gonna talk about default timeline settings. For these, we are going to go to File, Project Settings, and then go to Master Settings here. And here you'll see what your default settings are set to. You see here, I have a timeline resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. So every time I were to make a new timeline, it would start with these settings. But what if I was editing all my videos in 4K and I didn't want to spend the time going into timeline settings every time to change these settings? Here's what you would do. I'm gonna select this timeline resolution and go down to 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD or 4K. I'll select that and then click this save button. And then I'm going to open up those same controls, go to file, project settings, and I'm going to switch from master settings to presets. I'll click that and then I'm going to go to save as. I'll give this a custom name like UHD and click OK. And you'll see it adds a preset here with those new 4K resolution settings. But there's one more step. I'm going to right click on that and go to save as user default config. Once I click that, that preset will apply. So any new projects, any new timelines will automatically be in 4K. And you can change this to whatever resolution or frame rate you most often work in. And finally, the last thing we're gonna to touch on in this miscellaneous settings section has to do with caching. Caching is the process of pre-rendering effects or scenes so that they can play back in real time and you can preview them before having to export your whole video. Here's an example. I have some simple text over video and that text just shakes back and forth. And because I have caching enabled, you'll see that over this text, it is this red bar that is slowly turning to blue as this effect is cached. It's going a little slower because I'm also screen recording. If you do something similar and you don't see this caching bar, try going up to playback fusion memory cache. By default, I believe this should be on auto. If it's on off, check it on to on or auto and then you should see the same caching process. But here's what's really important to know about this caching process. And that's that this is actively generating files. It is actually rendering this scene, just storing it in a location that it can pull up quickly before you actually render your video. But these files can take up a lot of space. A lot of new users don't know this and then they're stumped when their hard drive is suddenly full and they go and see that it's full of these cache files. You do have an option in playback under delete render cache, you can delete all unused or selected clips. You could just select this text, go back to that setting, delete render cache, selected clips. And if I click delete, you'll see that it gets rid of that blue bar, replaces the red bar, and then recaches that effect. But even if I go up here to playback, delete render cache, delete all, that is deleting all of the cache clips for this project. If you don't do this at the end of every project, then you might have cache files just sitting, taking up space on your hard drive. Here's how to find those. We're gonna go back to file, project settings, master settings, and here under working folders, cache files location, you'll see this file path. And you can just navigate to that in your finder and you'll see every project that has cache files stored on your hard drive. And I can see by mousing over these folders, I'll see this is a file that's almost three gigabytes. This one is 11 gigabytes. So I'm just going to select all of these projects and delete those. They'll most likely be too big to recycle. So I'm just going to delete all of them and you'll see that I am there deleting multiple gigabytes of clips because I have this project open. 
when I head back, you'll see that this caused a conflict because I had this project open, but real quick, I'll just select that clip, go back up like we did before to project delete render cache, selected clips, that should clear that out, and then it'll render this text over the video just like it did before. Of course, there are so many other small things that are important to know about the technical side of Resolve and the settings, but these I thought were most important to know up front. Number five, presets, presets, presets. I can't stop talking about presets in DaVinci Resolve. And that's because I think they are and are only going to become more of a big deal. The existence of the Fusion page absolutely blasts open what is possible with presets inside Resolve. And even if you're just getting started, there are presets that will speed up your editing or just bring you massive improvements to quality of life inside the software. And over the past several months, I've really been diving in trying to create some of these new and useful presets. That shaky text I just had on screen, that is a preset I made. I've created pop-up social promotion presets. I've created simple masking effects that you can just drop on a clip, it's instantly masked, and you have some custom controls in the inspector to customize it. I've even created a preset that brings some of the color control options in the Fusion page to the edit page, so you can apply simple effects like increasing saturation or contrast without even needing to enter the color page. And those are nice, but one example of where I really think these are going to go is the preset I made for editing TikToks. You drop your footage on a vertical timeline, apply the preset, and it instantly reformats that footage into a popular style like you see on TikTok. This is something new editors should be aware of, and really, I think it's a pretty big reason for why you should start working in Resolve at all. The market for these presets and templates and plugins is only going to get larger and larger as more people discover this functionality. So while I think you should use these presets, I also think that there's a lot of opportunity if you want to dive in and start creating these presets as well. If you want any more information on the presets that I have created, I have a recent video where I run through every free preset that I've created on my channel so far. But those are five big things or five areas I think every streamer should know about DaVinci Resolve. I really like this software and the fact that it's free is amazing for so many new creators and streamers. We all know that original video content can be a massive part of growing a stream. And if you're looking for a place to create all of that content, I can't recommend DaVinci Resolve enough. Thanks so much for watching everyone. That is all I have for you today. If you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, leave them in the comments below. I will be checking those out. And of course, subscribe to the Epos Vox channel so you don't miss any of the amazing content that has been here. I know it's been a massive resource to me as I've gotten started and I'm really happy to be here today. So thanks for watching. Follow Epos Vox on TikTok and I'll see you next time.